just west of the marches and not far from the Shakespeare country. Wales, one of the smallest nations in the world, so small in numbers that it treasures the tale of its past like the story of a family. So great in spirit that from these valley cottages, from these hillside farms, its sons and daughters have made their mark on history and yet remain loyally, even obstinately, Welsh. In this little land, they still speak the tongue their Celtic ancestors brought to Britain four centuries before Julius Caesar. From this land, Welshmen have ridden forth to become leaders of nations, to shape the future of lands bigger than their own, like Henry Tudor, who became a King of England, or David Lloyd George, who led Britain through the First World War. But today we are not going so far, just to the Estetford. Almost every village in Wales has its Estetford, and the Royal National Estetford, held in North and South Wales in alternate years, is the focal point of the nation's culture, and a unique attraction for visitors. Here the bards gather in their traditional robes of white, green and blue to select and crown the prize-winning poets of the year. For above all, Wales is a land of poetry and song. Prowess in either of these is universally honoured and a Welshman who cannot sing is a contradiction in terms. If you ask a Welsh farmer, for example, how many men work for him, don't be surprised if he answers two, a baritone and a tenor. <laughs> En Ulad Vinadai, Land of My Fathers, is not merely a national anthem, but also the epitome of what Welshmen feel about this land of hills and mountains which have profoundly affected its history. For they have always provided Wales with a natural defence against attack from outside. The isolation of rugged heights and narrow valleys has kept the Welsh people, the Welsh culture and the Welsh language alive since the dawn of British history, through turbulent centuries when might was right. But though every square mile of Wales is soaked in history, to the pride of its countrymen and the delight of its visitors, Wales does not live by memories alone. Hence the magnificent civic centre in the heart of Cardiff, the capital of Wales. Though it was founded in Roman times, a century and a half ago, it was still only a small country town of 1,800 souls. Today, with its beautifully planned parks and open spaces, it is a city of a quarter of a million people a city which has preserved much gracefulness of living. Cardiff's Cathedral is one of the tallest of the many fine buildings in the Civic Centre in Cathays Park. At the other end of the historical scale is the massive structure of Cardiff Castle.